Today, I'm gonna show you a technique that can completely change your approach to sampling and just help you make really unique sounding beats. Hey son, who cares if you trace my same steps? Some days I wake up brain dead. Hook me up on life support. Will somebody tell me what I'm fighting for? Now this is a technique that I've seen a lot of my favorite producers use and it can help you make better beats in so many different ways. Before we get into it, if you like my videos and they help you out, think about subscribing and hitting the like button. It really does help me out and if you ever get tired of my videos, just unsubscribe. So let's just jump right in. First, what we're gonna need is a very particular type of sampler. The one that I'm using here is called Iris 2. You can find this on sale pretty often for only $10. It's a pretty decent plugin. It has a lot of different presets and sounds that you can use. But what we're gonna use is this other feature in it, which is its sampler. And what this can do is allow you to use your sample in a way that you've probably never seen before. So first, let me show you by taking this sample right here. Just a loop here, nothing too crazy. The first step is to take your sample and drag it into Iris. And what you're seeing here is a readout of the sample and all of its frequencies. So if I hit my keyboard, you can see. So far, pretty straightforward. Now this might not be a view that you're used to seeing. What you might be used to seeing is a view of your sample like this. But this view here is showing the exact same information, but we're also seeing the frequencies of our sample rather than just the straight volume. Up here in the chart are our higher frequencies and down here are our lower frequencies. So nothing too revolutionary so far, but the fun starts when we use this tool right here, the paintbrush. So what this paintbrush will allow us to do is to isolate very specific parts in our sample. Then we can take those isolated pieces and use those for our beat. For example, I'm gonna quickly draw something in and I'll show you exactly what it's gonna do. So here's what I've drawn out and as you can hear, now it's playing the segment of the sample based on what I drew, but what's cool is that it's only playing that specific frequency that I selected using the paintbrush tool. This is just a really unique tool and approach to sampling. For those of you that watched my video where I talked about the three levels of sampling, this technique allows you to do sampling at the highest level, where we can not only control the timing of our sample, but also control the space of our sample. This tool lets us play with the frequency space, which is just really unique. With this piece that I cut out, I'm able to isolate multiple sections of the same sample. Here, I'm taking this high frequency part of the sample up here, as well as some mid frequencies right down here. And if I wanted to, I could take this a step further and get experimental, maybe change how the sample plays. So I can change some of the options right over here, and for instance, play this sample backwards. And what I like to do sometimes is to just play the sample at different pitches, which this also allows you to do. Now already this sounds like a pretty cool starting point for a beat. I'm gonna go ahead and add some effects on top. Now I'm gonna continue to build this beat out. Once again, you can hear the original sample that I used. And this is what we ended up with. So as you can imagine, this technique gives you the ability to get really experimental. You can really take some unusual parts of your loop and use different types of samples to get some really unique results. Now, if you don't understand just how powerful this tool is, let me explain this a different way. This lets you take the best parts of your sample and make a beat out of it, which is really powerful. Imagine if you're able to take the best parts of yourself and just keep them and get rid of everything else. Even for me, imagine if I could change myself to keep the best parts that you guys like about me and remove everything else. So let's start with my head here. This thing's pretty useful because it's what I use to make my words and stuff and people like my words. They're really good words, so we'll keep my head. My torso here, it's not that great. You guys have never really left comments and told me that I have a sexy torso or anything like that. So I'm guessing you don't like it. I think I would be better off with that one. However, people do seem to compliment me on my arms. You pervs can't get enough of seeing them apparently. So let's go ahead and keep those. 
And even though you guys have never really seen them, I really do have some sexy legs. I took a picture of them just for this video, so let's make sure to add those as well. Now imagine if I look like this in my videos. That would be awesome and not at all horrifying. Plus, all the ladies would want me if I look like this. Well, this sampling technique lets you do the same thing. You get to select and choose the best parts or pieces of your sample and leave the rest so you can make the best possible beat. Let's look at some other applications or ideas that we can think about. With the last sample that we used, we isolated these very particular blocks, but we don't have to use the same type of shape when we use this tool. For example, let's say I took this sample right here. And instead of taking a square block, let's try a different shape here. Just a really cool sound. So what we're doing with this sample here is that we're starting at a low frequency down here. Again, because I chose to play the sample backwards and then it's going into a high frequency section of the sample earlier on right over here. You can almost think of this like you're using a filter that changes what part of the sample it's filtering based on what you select using this tool. It's just a really unique approach to sampling. So let's go ahead and turn this into a beat as well. The other great sampling idea that I didn't cover is that we can also select different timings within one sample and the selection that we choose doesn't have to be attached. So if I took this vocal sample right here, I can select multiple different sections of the sample as you can see with this pattern that I drew. And this could help us get some really unique results in terms of the timing and rhythm of our sample. These sections fundamentally become chops in a way. So a really cool technique, once you start pairing this idea with the usual manipulations using effects, this can really make for a strong sound design tool, even when using really normal basic sounding samples. And in case you didn't catch that sampling video that I talked about earlier, I really do recommend checking it out. If you're someone who struggles with sampling, it can help you understand what the steps are when improving at sampling. It should be showing up on the screen right now. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, like and subscribe. Head over to betterbeatmaker.com. That's where my full online beat making course is. If you want a free drum kit, head over to the description box below. And if you want to join my producer community, the link to that is down there too. And I'll see you guys next time.